I love talking American politics, but I really want to explain some of the detail about how just eight people were able to decide who would be in one of the most powerful positions in American politics. Let's go to Washington. Now, of course, there's the presidency voted for every four years. There are senators who are elected every six years. And then there is the House of Representatives, which is elected every two years. From 2020 to 2022, the Democrats were in charge, but they had a waffle thin majority by that election. Biden was low in the polls. The assumption was that the Republicans were going to have a huge wave, a red wave, if you will, Mr. President. You have a big red wave that has formed, as you probably noticed. But it didn't happen for a lot of different reasons, but it didn't happen. Yes, they won the majority, but as Time magazine declared, it was more of a, you know, pinkish thing that sort of turned up as opposed to the red wave. So... The final number in the House, you needed 218 seats, including the Speaker, to be able to become the majority. They had 222, so they've only just got enough seats. But in America, their system is basically unlike the Australian system, where it's a free vote on every vote. So you need every single one of 218 of 222 people to all do the same thing at the same time. And if you know American politics, that is like herding cats. But... They were eventually able to herd enough cats 15 times in a row to make Kevin McCarthy of California the speaker. After four nights and 15 contentious rounds of voting, McCarthy narrowly secured the speaker's gavel and took the oath of office. He was able to get at least 218 votes for most things for many months in a row. And then the bill came into his desk. The decision about whether or not the government was shut down because the House would not pass the federal budget. A government shutdown. A government shutdown. Government was going to shut down. A shutdown. For government shutdown. Hours of a government shutdown. Government will shut down. Hours of a government shutdown. A government shutdown. Did a government shutdown. Now, the reality of the American economy is that it is $27 trillion in debt. That grows by trillions of dollars every year. And put simply, they spend way more money than they get in taxes. Americans do not like their taxes being put up, like anyone around the country or around the world does. So the spending just keeps going up. So the credit card gets longer and longer and longer. But Kevin McCarthy was able to find a way to kick the can down the road. There was no government shutdown. And just last week, he was able to put this off until November. But Republican Matt Gates is somebody who is, if MAGA is MAGA and ultra MAGA is ultra MAGA, he's like pure MAGA. And he says, no, we have to attack the spending. I don't understand why we are here. I think what's really stupid is sitting atop a $33 trillion debt facing $2.2 trillion annual deficits while the world is de-dollarizing. And because the Republican majority, again, just like the Democrat one, is waffle thin, there's not that many people who can afford to cross to the other side on a vote if the Republicans want to get what they want. So Matt Gates was able to say, that's it, we are going to move to sack the Speaker for the crime of using Democrat votes to extend the federal budget and not shut things down. Now, amazingly, the Democrats, who were all worried about a government shutdown, who got what they wanted because Kevin McCarthy voted with them to make sure the government didn't shut down, voted with the ultra-maga, pure-maga guy to sack the Speaker of the House. Pursuant to Clause 8B3 of Rule 1, I will now, now act as Speaker pro tem. The chair will inform the members of the House the following. The office of the Speaker was rendered vacant pursuant to the adoption of House Resolution 757. So Democrats got what they wanted, which was chaos for the Republicans. The extreme majority of Republicans didn't get what they wanted, which was for their guy to stay in charge. Instead, just eight people on the Republican side of things got what they wanted, which was, I don't know. The point is, hardcore Republicans, yes, Bush Republicans, but still, hardcore Republicans know, even if those eight people were on the right side of an argument, the message that is sent to 300 million Americans, we can't run anything. The Republican Party today just can't govern. 
Nancy Pelosi with a five vote majority, she was able to govern. The Democrats have become the party of discipline and the Republicans have become the party that lacks discipline. And you want to know something crazy? You don't even have to be a member of the House of Representatives to be the Speaker. They could literally pluck a person off the street as long as they could get the 218 votes needed to become the Speaker. For obvious reasons, they choose amongst their own, and it's a reward for how much money they end up raising for their political party. So now there is a conversation, and let's just put it there, a conversation that, yes, Republicans may well pluck someone off the streets, and that someone... Now, sources telling me at this hour, some House Republicans have been in contact with and have started an effort to draft former President Donald Trump to be the next speaker. And I have been told uh, that uh, President Trump might be open to helping the Republican Party, at least in the short term, if necessary. But of course, even if Donald Trump becomes the speaker, isn't he doing stuff in court this year? There's other breaking news we're following tonight, including dramatic new developments in Donald Trump's civil fraud trial in New York City. The judge overseeing the case sharply rebuking the former president after uh, Trump attacked a court clerk on social media. Now, I'll tell you why I hate what happened in the House. Not because I'm a neocon, not because I believe that the military-industrial complex should be able to go on forever, not because I think the Bush years were particularly good. It's because it makes the Democrats look good, and the Democrats do not deserve to look good. They have ruined the United States. The Republicans should have had their red wave, but of course they didn't, which means they've got to fight like never before to be able to move the ball forward in 2024. And that means more House seats, more Senate seats, and take back the presidency. This didn't help.